If for whatever reason you want to remove the motherboard from the chassis of the Nook, that's fairly simple. Uh, it's actually held down by mostly the lid of the chassis on four screw holes here, but to keep it in position when the lid is removed, there are two additional screws, one either side. Uh, they're small sort of black screws which you can see in here. By unscrewing these, we then release the chassis, uh, the motherboard from the chassis, sorry. And then the easiest way to get it back out is if we take a pry tool and just get it in under the ethernet slot, we can use that just to lift the board slightly. And from there, it's a fairly simple case just to lever it out of the chassis and then we'll just use the lid just to prop it up so that we can take a look at it. Then we've already loosened this off so we can remove the fan which holds on with two screws and also the main cooling module and from there we can see the i5 Haswell chip um, it's an ultra low voltage part so we have the main die here which has two cores in it and also the 40 execution unit HD 5000 graphics in this i5 model and it also has the chipset on the same package here so you, it's not quite a system on a single chip, uh, you actually have two chips but from an integration point of view you only have to attach one main component to the board for both the processor and the chipset which then provides all the sort of I.O. functionality for the machine. Now, as standard with the Nook it comes with sort of the cooler pre-assembled and thermal paste already, well a thermal pad already applied um, as I'm intending to do a little bit of overclocking with this system, looking at enhancing the graphics performance of it, I've cleaned off the thermal pad from the cooler. You have to leave the chipset's pad on. There's actually a slight step in the cooler, so you need the thickness of the thermal pad to get the chipset portion of the chip to still contact with the cooler. And then we're just going to spread a thin strip of Arctic Silver thermal paste here. Um, this obviously doesn't increase the cooling capacity of the cooler but it does help just get heat quickly away from the processor die and into the, into the actual copper block itself. So from here we then can just refit the cooler Screw it down, refit the fan as well. Ensuring that we plug the 4 pin header back in up here. and that should just give us a little bit of extra cooling performance to help us with the system in use.